What's up everybody and welcome back. So today, if you are on this video, you already have your power back on, your pipes aren't frozen, and your family is safe, and things are feeling a little more normal, but now you have questions about what this storm potentially did to your warm season grass. Now I know for a lot of you, this whole experience was brand new, this once in a generation snow and ice and cold temperatures down south. For some of us, it's just normal life. So today, we're gonna go over three easy things that you can look for to see how much devastation may or may not have happened to your warm season grass. So, let's go ahead and roll that intro. <laughs> So let's quickly get on the same page here. We're going to be talking about Bermuda, St. Augustine, and Zoysia. So for the most part, this is going to apply to people from the transition zone south. And with the amount of snow and ice that came down, you could see some wide-ranging impacts of winter kill. That's not a term uh, maybe some of you are used to, maybe some of you are, but it's now something that you're going to put into your vocabulary and learn a little bit about today. So what are going to be the biggest contributing factors to winter kill on your warm season grass? So this is typically what you're looking out for. Number one, if the soils were super saturated before the freeze event. So if you'd been getting a lot of rain and you've been getting a lot of weather and everything was really full in the ground and then everything froze, you could have a higher likelihood of winter kill and that could be localized, like say in shady spots or under trees, things like that or it might be a little more widespread, you won't really know until we get to a little later in the year. Now, for a lot of you, one thing that can absolutely happen is that you will have a delayed green up. So basically the grass will stay dormant slightly longer than it would, even if it seemed like it was starting to change a little bit before this weather event. So one thing you can do that after the snow melts, after the ice is gone uh, and all of that, you can go back out there when the lawn sort of starts to dry out and brush through the grass, brush through the grass, fold it back, take a look, this is particularly on Bermuda right now, take a look and see if there's still any green down under the canopy, down close to the soil, and if that's still holding up. There's a couple of identifying factors that you can take a look at with the stolons, and this can apply to St. Augustine as well as to Bermuda. So if you take a look at this picture here, it's showing a few different uh, stolen examples that are actually still alive, and one that is dead. So you are looking for pale blue, light green, green, uh, but not gray or dead looking stolons. Uh, that is going to be a major indicator that whatever that thing is connected to, it's probably not going to make it. Now, another thing you can do just to check because you've got this grass that's going to grow from multiple different directions. If you pull some soil out and take a look at your Bermuda and the roots underneath and you still see some nice, white, healthy rhizomes, that is a good indication as well that there's still some life in there and that grass is going to come back. On a few of these things, you're not really going to be able to see a whole lot if your grass was still fully dormant before this event. It's going to take a little while for it to start to look like it's coming out before you can see maybe where there might be spotting. So you could potentially see like a leopard spot pattern that shows up on the lawn. You could see these wider teardrop patterns. You could see larger circles of dead. You could see nothing and it comes out just fine. There are some additional contributing factors that are going to come into play with whether or not you are going to have a minimal impact or a larger impact. And one of them is going to be soil K levels. So a lot of the time we associate potassium with stress and um, with aiding in the assimilation of other nutrients and basically just having a healthier plant overall. Lower K levels, which is potassium in the soil, can have a negative effect on this whole winter kill situation. It may contribute a little bit further because there wasn't enough uh, nutrient to sort of ward off the stress and quickly bounce back. So the second thing that could be potentially helpful, and I, I more hope this is true, where I'm standing right now, I do have part of a lawn left, but there is some exposure under the trampoline area where the grass has never been covered by snow this year. And in fact, we've had a pretty mild winter. 
there's roughly a foot, foot and a half of snow behind me right now on the ground, maybe a little higher where the wind drifted in, maybe two feet. But this snow is forming an insulating layer over the grass and is protecting it. So if you were fortunate enough to have snowfall that fell over your Bermuda or your Zoysia or your St. Aug, whatever it might be, and it kind of held in place before those air temperatures started dropping, that is actually a very good thing. It's going to be less damaging overall to the turf by having that insulating layer down when those air temperatures were getting extremely cold. So now let's get into the third thing that you can do if you just want to check and see how the damage could potentially be or maybe if the grass is or is not going to come back. And this is going to be the windowsill challenge. So here's what I want you to do. Find a cup that you can spare for a little while, maybe a couple of weeks. Check out the size of that thing. Go and cut out a core of your turf where you know you have uh, a nice set of roots and crown and everything is just in one contained unit. Take that out of the ground, put it into that cup, take it and set it on a windowsill and just feed it room temperature water. I don't really mean feed it, give it that to drink. So over the course of a little while, that grass will come out of dormancy ahead of anything else if it isn't dead and it will slowly start to show signs of life because you've changed its temperature. Its soil temperature is now going to be up into that 68, 70 degree range and things should start to move and you're gonna keep it in a more of a controlled environment in that window with full sun and that's going to give you a pretty good indicator of what's going to happen sort of overall in the lawn. So let's just quickly cover off what sort of recovery methods could be if you do see sections of winter kill this year. I think the best way to look at this is by size. And some people say size doesn't matter, but in this case, it most definitely does. If you are dealing with dead spots that are say anywhere between two inches and a foot, somewhere in the foot range, right? That's something that this grass will grow into and it will crawl back across and it'll cover pretty well. So if you have more spots and spotting going around where there is dead grass, if you feed properly, give encouraging nutrition, the grass will crawl back across it. And while that will take a little bit of time, it is something that can be done and it's not really going to cost you anything extra beyond your normal fertilizer budget. So what happens when it gets larger than that? This is when it gets a little more fun, I suppose, and definitely more hard work. You may come across, once you move outside of that one foot range and you start getting into bigger and bigger and more vast areas of dead, uh, really, there's two things to do. You can either sprig into that, or if you have the ability to seed into it, you can. Um, otherwise, like for my St. Aug people out there, it's going to be time to get a sod cutter out, take away all the dead, run down and grab a pallet of grass, and lay it back in and start feeding and getting it established so that it can blend in with the rest of the lawn. And that's gonna be the best way to do it. Oftentimes, if you're really trying to just recover something and the spacing is just too big, you will throw good money after bad and not get the result that you want. Sometimes the simplest solution is just to cut it out, replace it, start it growing in, start mowing, and then before long, this winter is just a cold memory. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to get this out and share it with you today. I hope everybody is safe and healthy and warm and you're excited for spring because I sure am. I'm gonna go move some snow around. I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.